Caution, swimming in these waters may make your skin illuminate. Oh, and you'll also be attacked by the Gilman as well. Here's your look at the Jada Toys Universal Monsters Creature from the Black Lagoon Glow in the Dark Entertainment Earth exclusive. Collectors, cast your net for this elusive Universal Monsters creature from the Black Lagoon glow-in-the-dark 6-inch action figure Entertainment Earth exclusive. Featuring a decidedly fishy appearance and disposition, harboring a detailed paint job and swimmingly articulated form, the Amazonian Gillman is a sensational glow-in-the-dark figure that can be posed in a multitude of mannerisms using his alternate head sculpt, an alternate hand, harpoon gun, a net, and bony hand. Additional head and hand glow-in-the-dark the creature from the Black Lagoon, out of the 1954 black and white film bearing his name, is suitable for paleontologists ages four and up and comes packaged in a window display box. Just so you know, I was going to start this review dropping the obligatory something seems fishy around here joke, but I didn't want to stoop to that level. No way. Not here. Even though by telling you I wasn't going to do it, I have still said it. I guess I did drop the obligatory something seems fishy around here. Let me also, though, just drop a thank you to the folks over at Entertainment Earth that did provide this sample of the Jada Toys glow-in-the-dark creature from the Black Lagoon. It is, after all, an Entertainment Earth exclusive. I can provide the link down below in the video description if you guys are interested to pick one up for yourself. Let's go ahead now and grab the tape measure. No way, we're not stooping to that level. Something seems fishy around here. The figure does stand six inches in height, Jack, just in case you are curious. And that works out to be a figure that's about 15 centimeters tall. Still reeling from those other Universal Monster reviews that we've looked at here on this channel. Well, to hook you in further, here's what he looks like next to the original. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do that for the rest of these reviews. No more fishing puns. But this is what the glow-in-the-dark Gill Man looks like next to the OG creature from the Black Lagoon. To be fair, the original one did have more paint going for it, but to be fair, it doesn't have the glow-in-the-dark that uh, this one has right here, which we'll, sh we'll show in a second. Here's other figures from this line. We can also bring in the Bella Lugosi Dracula, who is a little bit smaller than Gilman, even smaller still. Here's what he looks like next to the Bride of Frankenstein. And then not overlooking Frankie, here's what he looks like next to the Frankenstein's monster. The only thing I didn't bring in for this review was the black and white Frankenstein's monster that came included with the lab table, which, again, we've already looked at here on this channel. I hope, though, we are going to be getting other black and white treatments to both Dracula and Bride of Frankenstein, two figures that haven't gotten any other love than their OG releases. For the figure's accessories, the glow-in-the-dark Gilman has the exact same ones that came included with the original release. So we'll kind of have a look at those right now. This is his favorite friend, Annette. I think that was even a joke that was bad the first time I said it with the original creature from the Black Lagoon, and yet I felt the need to carry it over for this review also as well. The net itself does have a slight bit of elasticity to it, but it is actually a real working net. So if you wanted to catch the creature, is that all that was involved just to just to throw the net over the head of the creature? Hey, he's caught. It's not going anywhere. I think he would get away. You'd have, to, you'd have to tie down his legs or something. He'd probably be able to swim away from that. I never understood when someone gets a net thrown on them in a movie or a TV series. They're stuck. They can't go anywhere. I've never been caught by a net, so I can't really claim that it'd be so easy to get free from a net. If you have been caught by a net, let me know down below in the comments. Has there anybody been ever caught by a net? Let me know. Anyways, though, just to remove the net right now, this is the net that came included with the original creature. It seems to be exactly the same. I don't think the coloring has changed at all. So we're going to move those to the side. The figure also comes included with a harpoon gun. And to compare it with the original release, colors I don't think in this case have changed at all. It's the same gunmetal plastic. The same paint been added to both the handle and the undercarriage of the tank. Same harpoon gun. The figure also comes included with a skeletal hand. I don't have the other skeletal hand. I don't know what happened to it. Did it just decay and turn to dust? I think my cat actually just took it. But it does have the same decayed skeletal hand of Gilman. That's also something that gets included with this figure as well. You get a regular hand, not as decayed, and we can bring in the original hand that came included with that Gilman. Just the same, except for they're using translucent, this glow-in-the-dark plastic. 
everything on everything on this guy illuminates. And then the figure also comes included with a regular swapping head. And again, just to bring in the original one so you can see, this one has the gills more closed or closer to his face. It actually kind of looks like big, large sideburns. Look at the pork chops on the sides of those. Again, it's the same head sculpt. It's just that this one has more paint. This one doesn't have as much paint, but this does have the glow in the dark plastic. Picking the figure up, the head sculpt that he actually comes out of packaging with does have the mouth more open. And to show you the difference between the two, closed mouth, open mouth. Uh, again, like it seems like the gills are also a little more fanned out on this swapped out head than this one right here. To swap the heads out, by the way, just hold on to the torso and wiggle the head off the ball post. And then just go ahead and do the exact same steps, but repeating them, or reversing them, I should say, popping that back into place. You have either the option of having him with the mouth closed or the mouth open. I kind of actually, you know what, like the mouth more open myself. But if you did, you wanted to ch change those out, you certainly could do if you want to. I guess really, you could also change to this head sculpt, but then it would make any sense whatsoever because, oh, yeah, the rest of the plastic doesn't look at all like that. Just to bring in the two figures and how they differ from one another with their two different swapped head out, swapped heads out. This one does have the open mouth. Maybe what I might do is now that I have the glow in the dark now in hand, I might actually just display this one with the closed mouth and display this one with the open mouth so they look even more different from one another. The bodies, though, using the same mold are used differently because they're using the translucent glow in the dark plastic. And still, they managed to put in the stripes on his body. They also did manage to paint in the yellow on the fin that runs down the side, or the middle section here of his back, and then branches off down below here and run down the sides of his legs. He also has the additional yellow also added here to his arms. So it's not just the glow-in-the-dark plastic getting the point across. They have actually added some rather nice additional paint. Just streaks more of the darker green than anything else. But it does really help to illuminate this guy. Just add something different than the illuminated plastic. Speaking of the illuminated plastic, it'd be a great opportunity to segue ourselves over to the new black light that I've got using here for these glow-in-the-dark reviews. I'm, of course, going to cut the lights off in a second, but just to show you what it looks like. With the lights illuminated, now you can use a black light. You can also run this figure or just have it resting really against like a lamp light, for example. But black light seems to be the best at getting the plastic to glow or to absorb the light quicker. And again, we'll cut the lights here in a second. I just wanted to show you what it looks like. It looks more actually like a very bright green, the way I've got it illuminated right now. But as I move it away, you can kind of see how his body, see how his body like right here, seems a little bit more lighter and green. Don't worry, we're going to get back to that in a second. First though, let's have a look at the articulation here on the figure. It would be the same, yes, as the Gilman we looked at before. The head is on a ball joint, looks down this much up and not as much granted it's just because there's so much sculpting on the back of the head here head does also look back and forth but not a much not really much gets awarded or afforded there the arms do come out this one arm is really tight it's still tight how many times i've done this already to the figure in this one shoulder joint this one isn't so bad this joint right here is super super tight arms though rotate yes all the way around the figure does have a swivel right here cut into his bicep. So it allows the arm to rotate back and forth this way. The figure does have a double hinge, yes, on his elbow. And the figure does have a swivel in his hand all the way around. Upper torso is on a ball joint. A little bit lower down from that, he actually has a secondary ball joint right around the section of his waist. His legs split out. You can see there's the ball joint working behind the scenes. Legs go forward, legs go back. <coughs> Excuse me. Here's a swivel cut about three quarters of the way up the thigh. You can swivel it back and forth. <coughs> Excuse me. I must be choking on something. Figure does have a double hinge here on his knee. And then when it comes to his ankle, excuse me, he does have an ankle pivot this way. And the ankle moves also back and forth this way as well. I'm going to grab myself a drink of water, but also what I'm going to be doing is cutting off the lights so you can see what Gilman looks like in the dark. As we all now sit in the darkness, and don't worry, I got myself a drink of water, I'm going to grab myself once again that black light and passing it a few times over top of the plastic of Gilman. You're not going to be continuing to run the light across it. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. It's just absorbing a lot of the light that's coming from my little lantern here. And as I move it away, you can see how his body illuminates. It illuminates more very bright fluorescent green. Again, I'm going to run it across his eyes as well as you guys can see. 
It seems to absorb most of the light, I would imagine, in his torso, not as much in his arms and not certainly as much in his legs. But again, the longer and more the light that you have shining directly onto the plastic itself, the more illuminated Gilman will actually get. Glow in the dark. It's not really a gimmick that's going to work well with every single character. In fact, the Jada Toys Universal Monsters, for example, is really only going to work the best with the creature from the Black Lagoon. I really wouldn't want to use this same feature with a Bride of Frankenstein, Dracula, or Frankenstein's monster. Although, Frankenstein's monster, one thing they could do, instead of actually having the entire body glow in the dark plastic, maybe if they painted on electricity on parts of his body that, when exposed to a, a, a light source, could be parts that could glow in the dark. That might be something that they could always consider for a future figure down the road. But you definitely wouldn't want an all glow in the dark Dracula. I think that would look silly. Four accessories that come included with Gilman, they're all the same that came included with the original Gilman. So, the harpoon gun, the friend Annette skeletal hand and the swappable head and hands i did swap out the hand for him to hold the harpoon gun but it's only here to show you guys in final looks i'm probably not going to be displaying the gill man with the harpoon gun maybe if anything i might just display this figure with the net on his head seriously if you throw a net on somebody is that going to be enough for them not to be able to move Somebody that has been caught by net, please tell me down below in the comments section. In the meantime, though, I'd like to thank the folks over at Entertainment Earth that did provide this sample of the glow-in-the-dark Gilman that we could have a look at in this review. As you probably would imagine, it is available and in stock right now over on Entertainment Earth's website, to which I'll provide the link for it down below in the video description if you are interested to pick this one up, being that you already have the original Gilman, or you just are interested more in the glow-in-the-dark one than the original one, I'll provide again the link down below in the video description. Hey now, are you new to this channel? And I say that as I'm pointing to the person off to the back that's covered right now by a net. Seriously, sir, you can't you can't stand up from your chair. No, I understand that. You got the you got the net on your head and your shoulders, but you can still freely move your legs. Oh no, okay. Now he's freely moving his legs. No, no, I, I, I didn't mean you had to leave. Okay, the man with the net has now just walked out of the room. But if you are new here and you're certainly enjoying the content that you're seeing and you haven't already done so, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. Turn the bell notification on so you're going to get those reminders every single time a new video is going to be popping up. And there's definitely going to be a lot more content coming your way. As always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.